me begin by kind of giving you my quick run of the state of the world. A run that I think, I think that most of these writers would agree with. Bap, Anton, and everybody who commented on them. The state of the world is that our culture, our educational institutions, and almost our entire political dialogue and debate are ruled today by the left. By, in a sense, a lunacy on the left. And that lunacy is primarily expressed through, I think, what, what the, the, on, on the extremes of the left, one could view as a radical form of egalitarianism. And what Leonard Peikoff in Dim talks about egalitarianism as, as the most evil idea possible. The idea of the equality of all people, equality of outcome, that we're all the same, equal, metaphysically, morally, in spite of reality, as a negation of reality, that the purpose of the state or that the purpose of education or that the purpose of culture is to show us that equality, to bring about that equality as a moral, political, cultural ideal. And that this is what drives the left's view of sexuality. There is no such thing as male or female or differences between male or female. It's all just fluid. It's all just whatever it is. And it's all just the same. It's all just because there are no differences. Because differences mean inequality in some thing. Well, men might be stronger than women. Well, that's no right. So they can't be such things in men and women are just... Now, granted, only kind of the wacky left believes this, but most people who want to challenge this are afraid, are silent. I mean, egalitarianism, economically, you know, let's destroy the fantastic health care that most Americans have, the, the amazing health care that they have by having insurance, and let's destroy that by giving everybody a pathetic, weak, form of national health care that in every other place in the world that's used it has resulted in nothing by mediocrity and people dying waiting 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 because that's what mediocrity does it waits it sits and waits and can't do anything egalitarianism is the destruction of life best represented as Don Watkins and I describe in Equal is Unfair, Equal is Unfair, a book I recommend that if you haven't read, you should read. It's available on Amazon. Um, best represented by Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge, by death and destruction. Everybody who's ever aspired to equality of outcome in any form has only resulted in death and destruction and death and destruction of the able above all else. So we have a lunacy of the left in pretty much everything, from postmodernism to the negation of sexual identity to economic suicide and nuttiness and destruction to identity politics, which raises up races and organizes them based on who oppresses whom when and tries to flip it all around. So we've talked about may, uh, several times about intersectionality on the show. All of that, all of that is today a dominant on the intellectual left, on the academic left. Now, granted, most leftists don't buy into most of this garbage, but nobody has anything to say against it, very little to say against it. And certainly on the statism, 
part of it, everybody agrees. Everybody agrees about Medicare for all. Well, maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not in one step. Maybe we do it the Biden way and do it slowly. But everybody knows that the ultimate goal is Medicare for all. And ultimately, what does the right have to say about that? Well, nothing. The right, the traditional right, the conservative right, agrees with the left on almost everything. They don't challenge them. They're afraid to challenge them. They cower before them. And on economic, political issues, they adopt their programs. I've often said the Republican Party today is the Democratic Party 30, 50 years ago, and the Democratic Party today is the Socialist Party 30, 50 years ago. The whole map has moved to the left politically. And you saw that in Marco Rubio's speech yesterday. So the right has failed in everything in challenging the left. And indeed, even on those things where the left is right on, you know, gay marriage, uh, you know, the, the, the treatments of gays, the right, from their perspective, from the perspective of the right, has failed. So even when the left is right, or when the left is wrong, it's the left that sets the agenda. The right has basically been impotent. It's been unsuccessful in almost everything that it's done. I mean, as, as uh, BAP writes, whether out of loyalty to the general leftist social sphere in which the conservative intellectual establishment lives, or out of simple fear, mainstream and traditional conservatives have completely discredited themselves by failing to oppose the violent radical hatred and other forms of unprecedented insanity coming from the new left. And he's right. He's right. The Marco Rubias of the world, the people who represent conventional right, the people who represent conservatism, have failed, and they know it. They've been unsuccessful in challenging what the left has done, and they bought into it, and we know why. We as objectivists know exactly why. Because the right has bought into the altruism, has bought into the collectivism, and if you buy into the altruism, and even to and, and you and, 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 and you buy into the collectivism, and ultimately you're more subjectivist because you're religious after all, and you get your your morality from another dimension, from some God, you have nothing. You have no leg to stand on. You have no standard. You can preach the Founding Fathers, but they have zero understanding of the Founding Fathers. They have no knowledge of the Founding Fathers. They can't comprehend the Founding Fathers. Because they are not. Modern conservatives are not men of enlightenment. They are men of post-enlightenment, anti-enlightenment, or pre-enlightenment. In their religiosity, at least, pre-enlightenment. But in their collectivism, in their tribalism, in their altruism, they are post-enlightenment Kantians just like everybody else, just like the left. They share their philosophical foundations with the left. So we have a situation in America today. We have a nutty, nutty, lunatic left that ultimately succeeds step by step. It, it, it doesn't think it succeeds because they're, they're so out there that they haven't gotten to the way out there stuff that they'd like to do. But they are moving in that direction and have been for 100 years steadily, systematically, with almost no stopping. And you've got a right that's impotent in stopping them. Now that creates a huge, a huge opportunity. A huge opportunity for somebody on the right or even 
on the left, but predominantly on the right, to say, well, you guys are impotent. You have nothing to offer. You can't solve our problems. This is what they're saying to the conventional right. You have given up. A new strategy is required. A new approach to fighting the left. And look, what unites the right today is their hatred of the left more than anything else. So you have failed. You have failed in what you've done. And what is going to rise up are now new alternatives to how to defeat the left and how to create a new and better world. One of those alternatives, I think, I think they're basically two alternatives to conventional, to conventional, um, to the conventional right, two alternatives to conventional right that are rising as we speak. And I have a clear view on which one of them will win, which one of them will become dominant. But there are two of them. The one is a nihilistic right. And we'll talk about that because that is clearly where BAP and BAM fall. On the nihilistic right, where the alt-right ultimately falls. Where the Groypers and the uh, Nick Fuentes and the whole alt-right ideology falls. And a second, I think more powerful, ultimately more dangerous, and ultimately successful, is the nationalists, particularly the religious nationalists, who will oppose both the nihilists and the impotent and lead the right wing towards its promised future. So there to me is where the right is. Three pieces of the right. The establishment right, the conventional right, the right that dominates politics is impotent. It's nothing. It's nowhere. It's failed. It's licking its wounds. It has no way to go. The nihilist right is on the rise, particularly among young people. It's inspiring. It's, if you read everything written about it, it's fun. It's interesting. It's action oriented. It's about doing stuff, smashing things, making fun of people, doing memes online, protesting. And finally, there is where I think the more intellectual right, where I think the thinkers on the right are gravitating towards And that is the nationalist right, the much more explicitly fascist right, the right that is going to take elements from the nihilists, take elements of the alt, but rally them around a real cause, not a cause of just smashing things. They'll take advantage of that. The fascists always do. They rally the nihilists behind them, use them as the stormtroopers but rally them towards a cause. Rally them towards something, towards a mission, towards an ideal, towards a future. Because nihilism presents no future. And of course, you know, you can see elements of both in each, right? You can see elements of nihilism in the nationalists. And you can definitely see elements of the nationalist, fascist in the alt-right. They will unite in the end. 
they will serve one purpose. And again, the nihilists will become the stormtroopers for the fascists. They always do. They always do. The nihilists of the Weimar Republic became the stormtroopers, became the SS, became the most adamant of the fascist, nationalist Nazis. So that is the sad state <laughs> of the right. That's where we are today. A dead establishment and the more vibrant portion among young people is the, is the, uh, is the alt and the intellectuals all gravitating towards nationalism. Now, what is this uh, BAP BAM stuff? Now first, nobody knows who this guy actually is, uh, BAP, Bronze Age Pervert. He, he, he uses that as a pseudonym, again, hiding his true identity. Uh, uh, somebody said that the biggest secret right now on the right is uh, people are hiding his true identity, uh, uh, I don't know, I guess fear of reprisals from, I don't know, from the left or from the conventional right. I'm not sure who exactly would go after him. He is clearly well educated. He's clearly well read. He's clearly, you know, immersed himself in writers like, in, in certainly in, in, in the Greeks, in Greek mythology, in Greek philosophy, or at least certain aspects and certain parts of Greek philosophy. He has immersed himself in Nietzsche, and you can see much of Nietzsche in him, in Schopenhauer, in many respects, or in the most fundamental respects, he is a Kantian. He adopts Schopenhauer's called Kantianism. And in that sense, he, again, he is no different than the left and no different than the conventional right, and that's why the outcome will be no different than the outcomes have been throughout the 20 and 21st century. What does he, what does, uh, what does BAP advocate for? Well, first, for the fact that the world that we live in today is horrific. We, we are, you know, we are ruled by incompetent nothings. Uh, our big corporations, our businesses, our big tech, our big finance are all dominated by the same people who rule our political life, by the same type of leftism, by the same type of mediocrity, by the same type of nothingness. Generally, BAP, is, uh, you know, is very Nietzschean. He divides people basically into two, maybe three categories. The nobodies, the, what is it, what does he call them, yeast men or, or, or uh, bug men, just the average common person who doesn't think for himself, who just follows the party line, who doesn't care who doesn't live, importantly, doesn't really live. And then there's the great men, the men of science and technology, but more importantly, the men of battle, the men of the sword, the men of conquest. BAP is very much about the physical world. BAP is very much about lifting weights, but having an amazing male body, but emphasizing your masculine strength about being physical out there in the world. And he admires physical heroes. He admires the heroes of mythology, the heroes that use muscle in order to achieve their aims. He is, you know, he is a pessimist. I mean, he says Americanism is dead. There is no America. 
And he says even when there was an America, it was America of white supremacists. It was an America that most people wouldn't want today or wouldn't recognize today. So he, is, he worships a kind of a Bronze Age, an age of heroes, age of naked men, buff, running around with swords, killing the bad guys. That is his image of grandeur, his image of, I guess, greatness of masculinity, of what it means to be good. So again, like everything else in these things, there's an element of truth. It's true. It's true. That most men live mediocre lives. That in the world in which we live, most men, most women, are nothing. They have no grand values. They don't strive for any great virtue. They don't, they're not engaged in self-perfection. And there is a sense in which even taking care of their own bodies has been ignored. The, the, the obesity, obesity epidemic, I, I hate to call it an epidemic, the obesity phenomena in America and in ma many of the Western world. It really is an expression of self-hatred, an expression of resignation, an expression of lack of self-interest, lack of egoism, lack of self-love, lack of caring for oneself, lack of caring, lack of thought, lack of reason. So there is a sense in which, yeah, there is a vast majority of people today that don't know and don't strive to what is possible to man. What is possible through virtue, through great thought, through reason to human beings. But BAP rejects reason. Reason is not important. Actually, there's a section. I was going to read you this quote if I can find it now because I've got so many windows open up. Let's see if I can find it. Um, this quote on reason. Ah, it's somewhere here. Give me a second. Oh, yeah. Um, here's, here's a quote on reason. Right? No great discovery has ever been made by the power of reason. Whoa. All great discoveries were made by the power of reason. No great discoveries have ever been made by the power of reason. Reason is a means of communicating imperfectly some discoveries to others. And in the case of the sciences, a method of trying to render this communication certain and precise. But no one ever made a discovery through syllogism. That's true. But that's not what reason is. Through reason, through this makeshift form of transmission. But you see, this is the problem. This is his Kantianism. He doesn't know what reason is. And this is the dead end that people get to when they don't know what reason is. When they can't tie virtue and morality to reality, to success, to making your life your own, to making your life a success, to rising up from this mediocrity or below mediocrity, this, this negation that for so many people, life is just a living death. This is why suicide rates are so high in America. Because life is a living death for so many people. It just is uninteresting. It's boring. It's worse than boring. It's a struggle. It's painful. It has no purpose. It has no meaning. This is why people like Jordan Peterson are so successful. Because so many people out there feel that there is no meaning in their life. There is no purpose to what they're doing. There is nothing noble. There's nothing important to strive towards. But instead of offering values, real values, moral values. BAP offers weightlifting, improving the body. And he says, 
He says, and I think he takes it seriously, although it's hard to tell because of the nature of the alt-right, when they're kidding, when they're trolling, kidding, or when they're actually being serious. He says that beauty is the good. The good is beautiful. Literally, they are the same thing. Ugly people are bad people. Beautiful people are good people. Virtue is in beauty. Now, that's pretty amazing because so much of beauty is outside of our control. But again, this is a, a, a Nietzschean, a post-Kantian, deterministic view of man. A negation of free will. A negation of what makes us human. A negation of what makes us heroic. A negation of what makes us good. Because good is the chosen. Good is the chosen. Good is not what you're born with or happen to be born with. I mean, read who go to understand that ugliness does not imply vice. Ah. So what's amazing about this is how enamored these writers are with BAP. I mean, these conservatives find him fascinating, stimulating, interesting, funny. Everything I read of him, I mean, he's a decent writer, is pretty conventional, filled with what seems to me clearly conspiracy theory, you know, paranoia, clearly paranoid. Most of these old right are paranoid. He lies, he takes all kinds of stuff, even on the left, exaggerates the power of the left, exaggerates the evil, exaggerates the influence, as most people do, who are motivated by fear. That's the other thing that's stunning. That what drives BAP and BAM is fear. What drives the whole alt-right phenomena is fear. And yet they claim to be heroes. They claim to be the, 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 the heroic characters. Big, strong, powerful. The people should be afraid of them. Nobody's afraid of a bunch of cowards who think there's a conspiracy theory behind every action, who are afraid of a bunch of lefties who have nothing to say, who represents nothing in the world out there. In one passage, Bap writes, I mean, <laughs> think about this. He writes, if you fail to see that you live in the Soviet Union of the 1970s or 1980s, or rather something even more repressive than the Eastern Bloc of that time. It may be you don't know about the threats, financial ruin, and mob violence that Trump supporters and anyone really who steps out of line has been subject to since at least 2016, but actually since some time before that. Really? Are you nuts? Do you know what the Soviet Union was like? He claims to be a big reader and, and, and that Solzhenitsyn is one of his heroes. Have you read Solzhenitsyn? Have you read what the gulags were like? What was like under Soviet oppression in Siberia? You compare that to anything, anything happening today in America? We have no gulags. We have no concentration camps. Yeah, you might get fired from your job if you say politically incorrect things. I thought you were a man. Have a spine. Get another job. Would you want to work for a company that would fire you over your ideas? I mean, assuming your ideas were semi-rational. I wouldn't blame anybody for firing somebody like BAP. Are you really? So afraid of Antifa that you have to make them into some kind of big conspiracy theory rather than a bunch of punks, alt-left, 
nihilists. But no, according to BAP, Antifa is the establishment's paramilitary force. <laughs> I mean, this is paranoia. This is fear. This is the ultimate in fear. And this is what you'd expect, not expect from somebody advocating for heroism, manliness, standing up to the left, countering this world. Give me a break. I've stood in front of Antifa. They're nothing. They're nobodies. They're nothing to fear. They're impotent. All right. Been going on for a long time now. <laughs> so, what we've got today in response to the left, in response to the weakness of the conventional right, is an alternative right, an alternative right that BAP represents the nihilistic version of it. No, he's the more intellectual nihilist. He certainly is more intellectual than the other alt-right people that I've seen, all at the end of the day, stand for nothing. Really? Beauty is virtue. Virtue is beauty. I mean, uh, that is teenage nonsense. And indeed, there's a reason why the old right is a young boy's ideology, if you could even call it an ideology. It's not. There are no ideas there. There are no thoughts there. It's pure emotionalism, driven by an emotion of fear, driven by a lack of purpose, driven by a lack of understanding of the world around them, a lack of meaning in their lives, an emptiness, a real emptiness. And of course, into that void, and it is a void, into that void, yeah, somebody says, this is Nazism, yeah. This is Nazism. This is, the, this is the kind of social realism that both the communists and the Nazis projected in their artwork. Soulless beauty. Empty. Empty. Strength. Characters and sculpture that have the beautiful, masculine, heroic, supposedly, but no soul, no meaning, no spirit. Just a body. It's this kind of nihilism that led to Nazism. And it's the alt-right has to ultimately lead to some form of fascism. And of course the alt-right and BAP himself are racists. They're sexists. They hate women. They despise women. They view women as sexual vehicles and nothing else. They don't respect women's intellect. Women are there to serve men. To serve men in what? In sex. And little else. To breed. It's a primitive ideology. A primitive ideology. A pre-enlightenment ideology. And again, the only outcome of the growth of these ideas, and it is growing, all trade is growing, it kind of you don't notice it because it keeps growing in different places. It used to be small on the internet and it's splintered up into all kinds of little groups and it's and now when books come out, they sell tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of copies. Authored by these alt right nuts. Now the problem is that what the alt-right, what the alt-left, what generally the people at the fringes of society identify is something real. And the only solution th that people have out there is a reversion to tribalism, collectivism, fascism, nationalism, to collectivism because all the alts, have not, the have not broken the paradigm. All the alts 
have just reverted back to an ancient philosophy, a medieval philosophy. All the alts are just another version of Kantianism. All the alts, all these alternatives to the right and alternatives to the left and alternatives to the status quo, they are all just variations on the status quo. None of them reject collectivism. None of them reject altruism. None of them reject sacrifice. I mean, some of them, like this BAP stuff, they reject Christian altruism. That they reject. So they reject the idea of self-sacrifice by embracing the false dichotomy of if you don't believe in sacrificing yourself to others, then you must believe in sacrificing others to yourself, which is what BAP is ultimately calling for. So the only alternative given to you, the only alternative presented to you, by the left, by the right, by the alt-left, by the alt-right, by all these people who think they're radical, who think they're interesting, who think they're different, who think they've invented something new, all of what they're presenting to you is the same old altruistic garbage. That the only choice in life is between sacrificing yourself and sacrificing others to you. That the only choice in life is which group do you belong to and whether that group is strong or that group is weak. That reason is impotent. That inductive knowledge is meaningless. That what must rely on is the will. Is some kind of spirit to guide you. Some kind of intrinsic knowledge to tell you what is right or what is wrong. What you should and shouldn't do. And where you should go. And of course... Nihilism and hedonism are all that is left once you reject reality and once you reject individu the individual and once you reject morality. All that's left is emptiness, darkness, nihilism. There's only one alternative. And that alternative requires us to return to the values and virtues of the Enlightenment. And the only way to return to the values and virtues of the Enlightenment are to return to Ayn Rand or to discover Ayn Rand. Because it is only objectivism, only objectivism, that offers an alternative, offers an escape route from the altruism and collectivism and mysticism that dominate every aspect, every corner, every part of our culture. And indeed, objectivism is the only philosophy that offers an alternative, an alternative to the nihilism, the hedonism, the emptiness, the darkness, the meaninglessness, the mediocrity of life. Not just of modern life, of life forever, of life since the beginning of man. Since the beginning of man, we have been grappling to discover philosophy to discover the right way to live because we're not animals born with genetic instructions on how to live. We have to discover it. And for most of our existence as human beings, we have screwed it up. We've been ignorant of what it takes to live a good life, what it takes to rise up and become a human being, to become a man, to become a woman. For most of mankind, we have been, in BAP's terminology, bug people. We have been nothings. We have been barely surviving. We have been somehow struggling to survive. And sometimes, luckily and through some genius's own strength, some of us have managed to live a good life. Leonardo da Vinci comes to my mind. And some suddenly in the Enlightenment, the Renaissance, the Enlightenment. And here and there, there are characters who seem to live in spite of the age in which they are born. But mostly people just live with a small little L. They survive. 
But life is about more than just surviving. It's about living. It's about enjoying life. It's about being immersed in happiness, in values, in the struggle, in the pursuit for values, in self-perfection, in trying to make oneself the best that one can be, in driving oneself to be a hero, a real hero, a hero of the mind, a hero of value, a hero of virtue, a hero of self-perfection. That's what heroism's about. It's about using reason to guide one's life, about using reason to make one's life the best life that it can be. Yes, it's about being healthy. Yes, it's about eating well. It's about being fit, which doesn't necessarily mean bodybuilding, which I find to a large extent pretty vulgar, pretty materialistic, focused on the muscles. We're well, the most important muscle is our brain and you can't even see it. But that is what shapes who we are and what we are and how heroic and how good and how virtuous we can be and ultimately how healthy we are. Because it's through thinking we discover what health is. So I have nothing against m bodybuilding. But the idea that virtue is bodybuilding, virtue is muscle, that's the idea that leads to violence. No. Now, I like the fact that BAP emphasizes beauty, but not physical beauty. Although, to be physically as beautiful as you can be is a virtue. To be as healthy as you can be, to take care of yourself is virtuous. But the fact that you are born physically beautiful does not make you good. It is the choices you make. It is the striving towards surrounding your life with beauty. And there, primarily, that is the purpose of art, of aesthetics, of architecture, of just having an aesthetic view of the world. Beautiful flowers, beautiful sculptures, beautiful building, beautiful space, beautiful environment. That's what life is about, creating that. But to do that, first one must create your own soul. One must understand what to you is beautiful. What is heroic? What kind of a soul, what kind of a life do you want to live? Anyway, I've been going on for an hour now <laughs> on quite a rant. But the only solution to this quagmire is a true set of virtues and values. And that is, Ayn Rand, that is objectivism. If you want to be a hero, and we should all want to be heroes, overcoming great challenges, to be better, to be the best that we can be. Then yeah, you got to take care of your body, but more importantly, you got to take care of your mind. And to take care of your mind and your body properly, you need to define your values. You need to have a clear in your mind, a hierarchy of values. What is important to you? What do you love? Why do you love it? You have to integrate those values using reason, using your life and your happiness as a standard. You need to learn how to fight for those values and not give in and not stand down, not write under a pseudonym, coward. But stand up for what you believe in. Defend what you believe in. But first define what you believe in. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to iranbookshow.com. 
slash support or go to subscribestar.com, you're on book show and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.